Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it's that time of the week. It's lecture time. Guys, this week's topic is every move the market makes. All right, listen to a little police the other day, and I was like, you know what? That's a great topic. Let's talk about every move the market makes. Um, look, the stock market makes a lot of different moves from breakouts to breakdowns to pullbacks to retests uh, to sideways trends, et cetera, and so forth. And today I want to talk about those stock market events, those moves the market makes, because if you don't understand the next direction, you're going to have a very hard time making money. And on top of that, we're going to also filter in there relative strength, relative weakness, multiple concepts converging in an area. And we're also going to talk about a couple recent trades and charts that we looked at um, because some people in the chat room, they made some really bad mistakes, meaning they let a trade go against them so far that it ate up one month, two months worth of profits. And we just can't have that. If you're going to be a professional trader, you cannot let the five or 10% eat up the 90% profits. Does that make sense? Meaning if you're making money 90% of the time, you can't let the five or 10% eat up the 90%. That's just not, it's not productive. And that's what happened here. A couple traders in the room took something, it kept going against them, against them, against them, against them, against them, against them, and it never ever came back and they wiped out a month or two worth of profits. So we're gonna talk about that as well today because I think it's a very important topic. But the basic topic today, guys, is every move the market makes, the stock market events that you need to know to take advantage of the market. And then again, we're going to filter in multiple concepts converging, as well as a little bit of psychology and money management with regard to just being smart with your money so that you're not featured on an episode of When Will the Insanity Stop? All right. If you like these videos, click that like button, smash, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is every move the market makes. What does that mean? Um, well, it means a couple things. Um, we're going to go over the seven things the stock market can do, right? The seven moves the market can make. Um, but we're going to go a little bit off tangent, if that makes sense. Uh, we're going to throw in a couple extra things like relative strength or relative weakness, like cutting your losses. So I've kind of taken like three or four different topics and I've put them into this. So we're gonna take those concepts and put them into those market moves, if that makes sense, right? So we look at like a, a retest buy setup or a breakout uh, or the first pullback or something like that. Um, we'll take those and then we'll kind of meld them together um, you know, with uh, current events, not current events, but in terms of um, you know, not selling too soon or not holding on to a stock too long. Uh, or just understanding the basic environment. But before we do a couple comments, before we dig in, right? I know you guys have seen this before, but this seems very, very appropriate given what happened yesterday. The market had a monster day, nine or $10 move up in the queues. Um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, and you've probably seen this slide before. Most stocks, 70% of them move with the market, right? Most traders lose because they are on the wrong side of the market. A rising tide lifts all boats, right? I've, you've heard me say that phrase before. I don't use it too often, but I have used it. Um, the goal, generally speaking, is to ride the trend. The trend is your friend. You've heard all these cliches in the past, and we say all those things, but we don't always do all of those things. And while it doesn't happen that often, if you happen to catch yourself on the wrong side of a power trend, you are in deep, let's just not sugarcoat it, deep shit, all right? If you catch yourself on the wrong side of a power trend, up or down, you're gonna be biting your fingernails off and you are going to be watching your account just get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then what happens is the ego comes into play and you're like, there has to be a pullback. My gosh, it's up six 15 minute bars in a row. There just has to be a pullback. I mean, we took PTS and Jared said it has to pull back three, four, five, six bars. Well, it does most of the time, but there is that 10% of the time where it doesn't. And if you get caught out at that 10% of the time, guess what the 10% of the time does? Come on, audience, you experienced it yesterday. The 10% of the time does what? Talk to me. 
to 10% of the time does what? Rips your face off. <laughs> the 10% of the time wipes out the 90% of the time. The 10% of the time wipes out the 90% of the time. Tell me I'm wrong, right? You'll have a month's worth of gains that you've worked your ass off for 15, 16, 18 trading days. Man, you're killing it, crushing it, making 100 here, 500 there, 1,000 there. Boom, 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 and boom. That one day, that one trade takes out all of those gains. Not some, all. It's kind of like that, that novice trader we talk about where you're up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday you give it all back. Or Monday you have such a big down day that you're taking Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to get it back. You want to avoid these things. You're like, well, duh, Jared, I, I know I want to avoid those things. I know. But the question is how? How do you do it? Right? How do you do it? So we're going to talk about that as well. But if you see the market and it just has the look, the eye of the tiger, don't get in front of it. Because if you do, you're going to be in trouble. So does anybody remember this? I know it was a long time ago, that yesterday thing. Right? It's a long time ago. This was Tesla from yesterday. Okay? Now, it's hard to go against the market. This is the market yesterday. Let's take a look at the left. We had a choppy day the day before, and we have one, two, three, four, five green bars, then a little doji bar, and then three more green bars. And then the market was so strong that it didn't pull back. It just went sideways and then went higher. There was no appreciable pullback at all yesterday in the markets. None. Okay? And then you take a look at Tesla, and it moves up. And I even said the same thing. I was like, oh, it's you know, 252 area, there's some resistance here. I tried a short play here, right? And you can see it right here. Tesla, 248 by 250, one third lot. Now that's the saving grace here, one third lot. Why? The reason I started with a one third lot is because the market was so damn strong. I wasn't really sure how much more Tesla was gonna go. And I actually, at the time, thought this isn't bad. This isn't a terrible play, but you still look at it, okay? Still a third lot. Then looking for $1 or the 247 area. Added to Tesla at 249.50. Average is now 248.50. Stop is 250.50. Then I raised the stop using 251, okay? Small ad at 250.75. Cost average now 249. Tesla stops 250. So that's when I finally got my money management and said, this is the hard stop on Tesla. Now, to be honest and to be fair, this was only a, gonna be a, like a two third of an hour loss, even if it stopped at 253. Well, thankfully, on this little red bar, on this little red bar, Tesla pulled back enough that I got out for a very small loss. I think I lost like $20 on it. I think it was like $26, okay? Um, but if this red bar didn't happen and Tesla just keeps doing this, you have to, um, this, and this is important, so pay attention, you have to put a hard line in the sand, hard line in the sand. And that hard line says, I will get out here, screw my ego. And that hard line in the sand better not be like 5 or 10 R. Okay? For me, that hard line in the sand was 253. That's it. I was going to get out at 253. Once it set that little topping tail, I think it was like 252 and change. That's it. I put it right above that. And if I didn't get out here on this pullback, that was it. I was getting out. And if I didn't, this thing went to 257. Okay? And you look at it, that could have been ugly. That could have been a 4 or $5 move past the, the big stop because the original stop was like 250 or something like that. So that gets really ugly and can get out of control. And unfortunately, I saw a lot of your comments this morning and a lot of people got hammered shorting Tesla yesterday. I mean crushed. Like somebody said they lost like three months worth of profits. Another person said they lost a couple weeks worth of profits. It just wasn't... It wasn't a good scene. So while nobody wants a stock to go against them, you still have to have limits to that. All right. Yes, that loss might hurt a little, but it should be a loss that two to three winners should be able to get back. If you take a loss that's more than, say, three or four winners on the high side, it's too big. Let me repeat it. Write it down. If you take a loss that's more than three or four winners, and that's on the high side, it's too big. Okay, now I know Unmaw, I think his max is five. Like if, if he takes a loss that's bigger than 
5x. And that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot, lot. I mean, that's extreme. Uh, for me, I try to not go past three, right? If there is a loss bigger than, you know, one to three, then, then I made a mistake. I went outside of my money management parameters, okay? So this is less about Tesla and more about the concept of using proper money management, okay? It's not worth it. You're absolutely right, Jordan. And the other thing you guys need to be doing is going back all right, and taking a look at the last three or four times you've done this and see if they've ever come back. Go back and see how many times have you gotten past three or four X and they actually came all the way back. My worst position on this trade was two thirds of an R, right? Which would have taken me two trades to get back, right? For the share size I had on this yesterday, it would have likely taken two trades to get that back, all right? If it stopped out at 253, if. I'm okay with that. That's not ideal. It's not what I want. But two trades is not a big deal. Okay? So if you let it go 5x, 6x, 7x, and some of you guys, I, again, I don't know, but judging from your comments, some of you are letting these go like 10x against you, 15x against you, 20x against you. Think about what I said. If, if a trade takes two months of profits away from you, how many, how many, how many trades is that? Right? That's a lot. Okay. It's just not worth it for a single trade. Okay. Um, so when you look at that, please guys on the money management side of things, do not let it get out of control. And I want to be clear, but before we move on, it can happen very quickly. It can happen very, very quickly. I got in, uh, for example, um, Roku today. I got it a little bit early, 79.70. It popped a dollar against me like in a minute. And I'm like, whoa, where did that come? Totally unexpected. Thankfully, my stop loss was up at 81.25 and I readjusted it just a little bit, right? I readjusted it a little bit and then it came back down and I was able to get out for a small loss, okay? Sm much smaller than it would have been. But there's still a hard stop in the system. There was still a three to one, one to three hard stop in the system in that particular case. Okay, exactly. At that point, you're disrespecting money and money will bite you in the ass if you disrespect it. And then what's going to happen is you're going to take a week, two weeks, a month to get that back. Okay, so let's move along. But I wanted to talk about power trends, which we we're going to get into and not trying not to pick the top of those power trends. Now, if there is a double top resistance point, et cetera, and so forth, a blow off top with huge. I get all that. But every once in a while, they don't work. Right, and right here you can see that there was supposed to be a pullback right there on that doji bar on the cues, and it didn't. Right? It didn't. It kept on going. Respect it. Respect it. Okay, if it keeps on going here, you maybe give it a tiny bit more room. And if it takes that out, you just wipe your hands of it. And guess what? I know this is the part you're all thinking about. Every once in a while, it's going to end up working, and you got out for the loss every once in a while not often but every once in a while it's going to take your money after you put in that higher stop loss and peekaboo up and then it's going to drop and you're going oh i should have stayed in it no because of this this is the reason you don't stay in it you take that loss it takes you one to three trades to get it back you don't take that loss it takes you a month to get it back let me repeat it pay attention you take the loss it takes you one to three trades to get that back Okay, you can deal with that. You don't take it, it takes you a month to get it back, all right? So yes, every once in a while, just expect it. You're gonna get tagged and it's going to end up working. So what? So what? Oh well, the loss is small enough, manageable enough that it doesn't matter. Get your ego out. Take it out of your head, throw it in the closet because that's what's causing you to hold on to these things. This is impossible. There's no way it can go up eight bar. Oh my gosh, it's nine bars. There's no way it can go up 10 bars. It's up 10 bars. There's no way it can go up 11 bars. What the heck? There's a wide range bar on the 10th bar. It's got a top. Oh, it's definitely pulling back now. And then your ego just allows you to hold on to the thing. And then you realize the market closed at the high of the day and so did Tesla. And all of a sudden you're screwed. And all because of your ego, you will be working for free for the next month to get all that money back. That's just dumb. Take the loss, 
Deal with your ego later. You'll get the money back tomorrow, maybe the next day at the worst, and you're fine. Versus now many of you are sitting here literally, you're literally thinking, if I'm well, maybe by September 15th or September 30th, I'll get that money back. That's a problem. All right, now, this happened today, 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 okay? This is meta. Now, yesterday was a monster day in the markets. We just got done talking about that. Yesterday was a huge day in the markets. Generally speaking, after a stock or the markets have a monster day, what happens? The next day is a quiet day. Yeah, sure, every once in a while, the next day, things move up, right? Or in that direction. But most of the time, the next day is a bit quiet. So that's what I had expectations of today, a quiet market day. And our expectations don't always come true, right? So what we have here is the cues on the right-hand side. Initially, they were choppy. And you can see that. Let's look at the one-minute chart here. It's, it's the one, the small chart in, in pink. And I apologize if it's really small. I'm sorry. But right there, okay? Chopped around, chopped around, chopped around. Okay? That's what I expected. While the market was chopping, Meta was going lower. Okay? While the market was chopping, Meta was going lower. Also, during that choppy period, Meta happened to break the support area of 296. Okay? So what I like to do on these is do this. And I think it's, whoa, what was that? I don't know how that got in there. I don't even know where that came from. All right, let's try this. Try that again. There we go. I think it's it's helpful at times, guys, to do this. What do we have here? This is what it becomes, right? While it's above this area, it's bullish, right? While the stock is above this pivot, it's bullish. Once it breaks below that, pivot, it's bearish. So my point I'm making is Meta had a little bit of support at 296 from yesterday, right? A little bit of support. Then finally broke that area. But note, it broke that area with no help from the market. The market just chopped around and went mostly sideways until about, I don't know, 950-ish, something like that. What did Meta do? It pulled back almost straight down until that area. Market starts to bounce around 950. Meta starts to bounce around 950. But look at the difference. This is very, very important. Meta gets back up into the 296, 297 area. What's at the 296, 297 area now? <gasps> Resistance. It's no longer support because we moved below it. So on the move back up, the floor becomes the ceiling. So as we move back up into 96, 97, you should expect some sellers. That's exactly what happened on Meta. But here's the kicker, and this is where you have to start adjusting. Okay, This was roughly between 950 and about 1015, about a 20 to 30 minute period right here. What did the market do between 950 and 1015? Talk to me, guys. What did the market do between 950 and 1015? It went from 374.50 to 377. That's a $2.50 move. What did Meta do? What did Meta do? It stayed sideways, leaving topping tail after topping tail after topping tail after topping tail. So while the market ripped higher, $2.50 higher, Meta stayed in a range at minor price resistance. This is relative weakness. So, okay, wait for it. 710 or nine, or sorry, in this case, 10, 10 in the morning, watch Meta under 295.75. That's where this blue area is right there. Okay, right there. Needs some market help, but looks lower. Meta has a definite relative weakness, but it won't last forever. This is right before the market starts to fall. The market starts to fall around 10.16. Right around 10.15, still watching Meta under 2.95.75. A minute later, Meta just needs a five-minute market pullback. What did Meta need? A five-minute market pullback. The market started to pull back, and Meta tanked. Yes, the market did accelerate and did 100% retracement. Okay? My point I'm making here is, this is a good bet. Why is it a good bet? Well, good traders do what? They get multiple concepts to converge in an area. 
And then after that, it's just about the odds. I, I'm not Nostradamus. I cannot predict the future with 100% certainty. I'm just playing the percentages. That's all I'm doing. So what am I doing here? I'm, I'm going to put you guys inside my head. All right. I'm first going back to yesterday. Yesterday, the market ripped. Okay. Normally, the next day after a market rip, the market doesn't rip. It has a doji day or at least a narrow range day. Even if it goes higher, it's a narrow, narrower range day. So that's what I'm thinking. Market ripped yesterday. Today should be a narrower range today. I doubt we're going to see another $9 day today. Well, what did the market just do? The market just went up one, two, three, four, five, six five minute bars. Six five minute bars in a row. Notice some sellers are coming in a little bit along the way. So I'm thinking, all right, market was up a ton yesterday. It's probably not going to be up a ton yesterday or today. Today, it's just been up five or six bars in a row on the five minute. Meta is hanging out in a range at minor price resistance, showing relative weakness. Okay, what's the only thing that could ruin this trade for me? The market to keep ripping higher, not grinding higher ripping higher not grinding higher ripping higher well the odds of the market ripping higher after six bars up on the five and a nine dollar move the previous day and again it's possible but the odds are in that 10 percent range right they're in that 10 percent range okay now i need to find a stock that's going to be weaker than the market and respond to any market pullback I found it, it's called Meta. And Meta broke the low and it's at minor price resistance showing topping tails before the market ever pulled back. Note, guys, from 950, Meta struggled. There's an engulfing bar, there's a topping tail, there's a red bar, there's a topping tail, there's a topping tail. Oh my goodness. And then, then you get the most beauteous thing you've ever seen. You get this massive topping tail, right? Let's pull this up, let's, let's just blow this up real quick. All right, let's take that, okay? Hold on one second. just do this do you guys see do you see that topping tail you see the, the red engulfing bar right there see the red engulfing bar right there okay that clearly sellers are coming in doji bar topping tail red bar topping tail topping tail topping tail massive peekaboo it was money it was so much money it's it's ridiculous okay but just take a look at the consolidation in general I'm not getting a bullish feeling on this consolidation. I'm getting a bearish feeling because it tried to break out over here and it got engulfed. And then the next bar was a red bar topping tail. Green bar, but a topping tail. Red bar, green bar topping tail. Red bar topping tail. Green bar topping tail. Massive shakeout topping tail. Oh my gosh. Stop the presses, Vicky Vale. All while, all while, okay? The market was up six, whoopsie, sorry guys. All while, the market was up six bars in a row on the five. The stock was at minor price resistance. I can't guarantee you the market's not gonna go up more. I just know that we're extended a little bit here. This stock is showing weakness and if it triggers that sell set up, it's going to go lower and the market Pull back. Did I expect 100% retracement? No, I was expecting a pullback to 376. That's it right there. I was expecting a pullback to about right there, 376. Worst case, 375.50. So 375.50, 376. And what did it do? It went to 374. This is trading, guys. This is how professional trading is done. And then one last comment. 1027, look for a scalp bounce in the queues. Why? Why would we be looking for a scalp bounce in the queues? Because we just dropped 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 one minute bars in a row. Where did we drop to? Support. Retest from earlier today and support from yesterday. Retest, yes, it went a little below that area, but a retest from earlier today. And then support from yesterday after a 13 bar pullback. 
you're going to get a bounce. And even if you don't, I can put my stop a little bit under and I'll get a bounce maybe five minutes from now instead of right this second. So this is how you trade relative strength and relative weakness in conjunction with the market. If you wait for just these trades, you may not take as many trades, but you're also not going to lose as many trades either. These trades work most of the time. Okay. It's the same reason we shorted meta this morning, right? We got in meta at like 296. We shorted this. Almost forgot that we did that. We shorted meta earlier today. Um, and uh, it worked very well. We got in at 296 by 298. Why 296? Because that's the support area, right? And then it dropped, gave $2. We were looking for a dollar, bounced back up, dropped again. Meta paid out today. Meta was a much more, what I would call, obvious trade today. This gave you everything you could want. And then the market gave us finally what we were looking for. And then, of course, you could have bought the bounce in the market as well. All right, so I could have stopped the lecture right there. We could just be done for the day right there. But I do have a decent amount more slides. I'm going to go over this one a little bit quickly, okay? Um, these are the seven stock market events. For those of you that are a little bit newer, these are basically the only things the market can do. The market can go up in an uptrend. It can go down in a downtrend. It can go sideways, right? It can have a bit of a breakout, which is where it goes sideways and then breaks out into it. It can go sideways lower and break down. Then we have the uptrend break, which is that double top retest, break of the trend line, break of the moving average, all right? And then we have the downtrend break, right? So when you look at this, these are basically, I mean, sure, within these different types of price action can happen on these lines, but these are the basic things, really the only things that the market can do, okay? And if you know these events, it's going to help you understand where you are at in the market so that you're not on the wrong side of the market. Because everything we've talked about today is being on the right side of the market. And remember, to be clear, we were on the right side of the market on Meta. The market pulled back when that trade triggered. So you got the pullback. Yes, the market was in an uptrend at, the, at that time, but we were scalping it and we got the pullback. So we were on the right side of the market for that, okay? So these are the seven stock market events. And to be clear, again, I'm not gonna spend much time on this slide. You guys are tired of seeing this slide, all right? I show it too much, perhaps. This stuff's been happening for 100 plus years. It still works today. It always works. Why does it always work? Because humans are still humans, right? We're still motivated by fear and greed, not just in the stock market, just in life in general. And if the last three or four years didn't tell you the impact of fear and greed, I'm serious, I'm not trying to get, you know, canceled right now, but seriously, I want you to think about it. The fear of the average person and the greed of the average business and government. That's exactly what happened over the last three years. They used fear to take advantage of their greed. That's what the last four years was all about. You can believe me or not, but that's exactly what happened. It was the largest transfer of wealth from the poor and middle class to the rich in the history of the country. And they did it with fear. They scared the F out of you guys. And then they printed a shitload of money so they could line their pockets. My point is, is, that's 2023, 2020, 2021, 2022. It's no different than 1920 or 1930 or 1950 or 1970. It's no different. Human beings, we were run off of fear and greed. It's that simple. The beautiful part is we know how to take advantage of it. And we use these little red and green candlesticks. In this case, they happen to be red and blue candlesticks, but you get the point. Breakout in 1909, 1910, right? Climactic in the 1929 crash, right? A little three bar play off there. Another little buy setup, a little breakout here, a little double bottom retest, okay? All these patterns have been working for a long time. They're not gonna stop working tomorrow. So stop asking that question. People ask it to me all the time. Well, Jerry, do you think patterns will stop working? Well, if humans stop being human, then yes. But as of now, even with HFTs and algorithms, they still act like human beings. They still form patterns. 
right? No matter how random something is, there could be a pattern in the randomness. And so far, for the last 120 years, it's worked this way. And I don't foresee a future where it won't work. So I'm going to keep using what I use because it works, all right? And if it doesn't someday, we'll sort that out. But right now, the odds are that it'll continue to do what it's been doing because it's always done this, all right? And you guys have see the basics. We break down under support. The support becomes resistance on the way back up. So you break down, you bounce, you break down, bounce. I think you guys, and I'm not a huge fan of moving averages and trend lines, but I really think you guys should be drawing these on every chart. And I think Unmall made that very clear in his options course. These trend lines are very important, but remember, it's never one thing. And that's the thing you guys have to start getting in your heads. It's never one thing. So don't do something off of a hunch. Do something off of probability. Repeat. Write that one down. That's a gem. Don't do something off of a hunch. Do something off of probability. So when I look at the stock that's holding the trend line, that's great. But I still need to see the doji bar. I still need to see the topping tail. Right? I still need to see minor price resistance. I still need to see a sequential move higher. I still need to see all of these things. I'm never making a decision based off of one thing. I'm making a decision based off a collective of things. And the more of those things I have, the better off it'll be. Okay? So I, I don't know if, you, for those of you who have seen the movie Pearl Harbor with, uh, what the heck's his name? Uh, ben Affleck, right? And a lot of other people. But there was a scene in that movie where they're basically surmising what could happen. And then. I don't remember his rank, but he basically tells the general, well, that's not my job, sir. That's your job to make a decision on imperfect information. If you guys remember that scene, he basically says, it's not my job, sir. It's your job to make a decision based on imperfect information. And his response to that was, well, get me better information. That was the response. Get me better information so I can do my job more accurately. That's what trading is. Do your job so well that your accuracy is up in the 90 some percent range because you're using multiple concepts to converge in an area. And you're going to see this later on in a couple other slides. So don't just take something because it looks like a decent sell setup. Take it because it is a decent sell setup and you have seven, eight, nine, ten line items to prove that to you. Okay? So, next, power trend, same thing. Look at riding the trend line. Yes, it cut through a little bit, but take a look at this. Right here, pull that out to there. You're having multiple concepts converge in an area. Oh my gosh, why does that keep happening? Sorry, guys. All right. Wow, you come up with that stuff fast, right? Based on, there it is. No, sir, I understand my job is to gather and interpret material. Making difficult decisions based on incomplete information for my limited decoding ability is your job, sir. And then the reply was, Sophia, if you could put that in there too, that'd be great. But anyway, point here is we have an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. Remember, we have corrections through price and time, right? Correction through price is a pullback. A correction through time is a consolidation, but it's riding the moving average. It's riding the trend line. We have a bottoming tail to start the day. It gets far from the moving average. It needs a breather. It needs a rest. It needs a pullback or a consolidate. It pulls back where? Above the moving average, at the trend line, on a 50% retracement, right above minor price support. Top of the pivot, bottom of the pivot, 50%. This is getting multiple concepts to come together to create a more accurate view of more accurate picture of what's going on. And if you are too arrogant, too egotistical, too, I don't guess, not specific enough, you are going to have a problem trading. You need to sit back and just clear the emotions out of your head and go, I'll wait. You're literally just waiting for exactly what you're looking for. And if you don't get it, it's like buying something and say, look, I will not pay more than $10 for this. So unless you're willing to come down to $10, we don't have a deal. If you do, we have a deal. And I won't budge by a penny. Too many traders talk themselves into trades. Tell me I'm wrong. You guys talk yourselves into trades or you talk yourselves into staying in a bad trade. Don't do it. It's it's. It's a problem. It's going to cost you a lot of money. There's always another trade, and if not today, then tomorrow. There's always another trade, and if not today, then tomorrow. I'm just popping off the gems today, okay? 
So, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Downtrend. Look at the, look at the trend line right here. Okay, downtrend, 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 downtrend. Beautiful little channel. Great. We're not going long in this scenario, unless or until something changes. And what has to change is a double bottom retest that ultimately breaks above the prior pivot high, puts in a higher high, all right? And then preferably pulls back to that support area, okay? There you go, Brian, okay? So wide range green bar, after a what? Triple, quadruple bottom? First you have the bottoming tail, then it retests on this bottoming tail, right there. Then it retests again, right there. Then it retests again, right there. Then you get a gap up the next day, it takes out this pivot, takes out this pivot. So it's put in two higher highs. And not as if that wasn't enough, it breaks above the trend line, above the moving average, not on the chart, and it breaks above this pivot. So that's one, two, three, four pivots it's taken out. Four pivots it's taken out above the trend line, above the moving average. Okay. Then you get a little three bar play. And what happens to that little old three bar play? What happens? It triggers and shakes you out. Triggers and shakes you out. This is where being flexible, giving them a little more room, or 84% play or getting back in, just being a professional about this situation could help you. Shakes out, moves higher, pulls back to support. This, now this is your money area right there. That's your money area where this second pink arrow is. That's your money point. Because after that bottoming tail, which held the trend, which held the moving average, you're above those areas now. So what used to be your enemy here, right? This trend line used to be your enemy. You're above it now, it's your friend. You're above it, it's now your friend. So instead of just getting shaken out here, getting all pissed off. Oh my gosh, that's so stupid, like this stupid HFTs. Stay calm, either stay in, because you gave it a wider stop, or get back in, right? Yeah, exactly, you could have just done the buy setup. Just depends on what, how you handle the three bar play, okay? Same thing here. Trend line break, ceiling becomes the floor. Trend line break, ceiling becomes the floor. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. What happens? We start to bounce back up. And what do we have right here? Hold on, let's do it right here. We talked about this one a while back, but right there, right there, we basically have a cell setup failure. Should have held there. Should have held below the moving average should have held the trend line, but it didn't. Didn't hold the moving average, it didn't hold the trend line, it put in a higher high, okay, that's a higher high, and over here, higher high and higher high. So I'm, I'm not necessarily going to be super aggressive on the failed sell setup, I'm gonna wait for the pullback. We talked about this one last week, I'm gonna wait for the pullback, because now, again, the ceiling has become the floor. So now I'm gonna look for that pullback and I'm gonna buy in this area. And I'm gonna still give it some room because it may wiggle around a little bit. And then I'm gonna add back on the way up. I'm gonna add back, okay? And then, real quick. Know that that's your target area. Know that that's your target area, right? On the move up. You have your first target right here, and know that this is your target. Even some of this could be congestion. Even some of this could be congestion. So when you see a topping tail up there on volume, walk away, walk away, okay, walk away. Guys, be smart with your trading. I have saw it yesterday. I've been in that position before at times with regard to letting your ego make a trade that your trading account can't cash, you know. Walk away when you have to. Or don't take bad trades in the first place. So there's two things to learn from this. One, don't take bad trades. If you happen to find yourself in a good trade that's just not working, 
cut it off. Cut out. Cut out the cancer. Cut out the gangrene. Cut it out. Don't let it spread throughout your whole body and infect your entire trading account to where you get to a point where it's really hard to come back from. That's no fun, and it's not good for your profitability either. So right here, <clears throat> you guys have seen this one before. Chops around, chops around, breaks out. Right, right here, breaks above the pivot high, goes sideways. Note, volume spike on the breakout equals commitment. All right, I put this in here because, again, these are part of understanding the market. This is another concept in your multiple concepts. It's above the moving average. It has a little bottoming tail shakeout. There's a volume spike right there on that doji bar that said sellers tried to come in and they couldn't. They failed, they failed, they failed. Bottoming tail reconfirmed strength. You get in right there, the whole number. And this stock continues higher. But hypothetically, I wanna be clear about this. Hypothetically, let's say you shorted this stock down here for whatever crazy reason for whatever crazy reason, okay? Let's say you shorted it down there. Don't ride this thing to the moon. That's foolish. It's clearly in a power trend. Walk away. Walk away. As Soon as it breaks out here, you're done. As Soon as it breaks over, just walk away. It's not coming back. And then you're gonna add to it and add to it and add to it and it's not coming back. So you're just basically making your position worse than if you had just stayed with the small shares earlier, okay? So if you wanted to add right in there and think, oh, maybe it's going to come back down and then put your stop right above it, maybe. You shouldn't be shorting this, to be clear, to be very, very clear. You shouldn't be shorting this, but I'm just making the point. If you are short, don't stay in this thing forever. This is how people blow up accounts. That's how you get in when will the insanity stop, okay? Just don't do it. So we talked about this one. It's not really volume summary. It's just should be really trading summary, right? Okay. Remember, price has to confirm everything. Does it have a pattern? Are multiple concepts converging in an area? Okay. Because we never trade in a vacuum. Not ever. Your hunch, it's not good enough. I don't care if it's been right the last five trades in a row that you didn't take. The one time you do take it, it'll be wrong. So we don't ever trade in a vacuum. You wanna be very cognizant of the trend that we are in, which goes back to this slide right here. Knowing where you are in the market cycle, in the market events is a huge deal because if you're wrong, you're gonna get filleted, right? If you're trying to short something that's actually in a power trend instead of in a downtrend, you're in trouble. And if you can't sort that out, and then your ego gets a hold of you, you're in for a disaster. You could take what appeared to be the nicest trade you've ever seen and turn it into your worst nightmare, All right? And that happens sometimes. Tesla wasn't a terrible idea, turned into a lot of people's worst nightmare. So multiple concepts converging in areas, what we're after. Be patient and disciplined enough to wait for your pitch. There will always be another trade. How many of you can honestly say that you do that every day? versus getting a little bit emotional, versus getting caught up in the, the hype, the excitement, getting caught up in what somebody else in the chat room says or thinks, getting caught up in, I don't know, some news report, getting caught up in an Elon Musk tweet. Screw all that stuff. It's got to pass your test. Your test. Because you're the only one that's going to lose money from it if it doesn't work doesn't have to pass my test. It doesn't have to pass Elon Musk's tweet because he's not going to lose money on it if it doesn't work. I'm not going to lose money on it if it doesn't work. You are. So if it doesn't pass your criteria, do not take it. Do not be swayed by me or Unmal or Jeff or Cass or Aaron or Jordan or whoever. Has to pass your criteria. And I tell it to you all the time. You might be wrong and I might be right. You still don't take the trade because you either didn't understand it well enough or it doesn't meet your criteria. I love when I see people say, yeah, you know, I didn't take Jared's trade or Unmall's trade because it didn't meet my plan's requirements. Wonderful. Why is it wonderful? I may completely disagree with your assessment, but I love that you have an assessment, that you have rules, that you have a plan, that you're not winging it. I love that because too many of you don't 
or at least you have something written that's in a drawer that you never look at. So when somebody says they didn't take a trade because of whatever reason, I, you know, they disagreed with me, it wasn't in their plan, great, I love it. And again, you might be wrong, but that's okay. You followed your rules and that's all that matters, okay? That's all that matters. So be patient and disciplined, trust me. You don't have to take the trade. There's always another trade. If you're feeling a little wheezy, you're like, yeah, I'm just not sure, but don't take it. And if it works, don't feel bad that it worked because you made the decision based off of the information you currently had and that information was not enough for you to take the trade. Therefore, you made the right decision. Now, in the future, you may add something to that criteria that would change that decision, but today, here now today, it wasn't good enough to trade because it didn't meet your criteria. Move on. Look, guys, it's called life. You're going to have a few regrets here and there. You're going to look at stuff and go, yeah, I wish I would have taken that. Oh, well, get better tomorrow. Be better tomorrow. Okay? And that's it, Ollie. Your spreadsheet decides it for you. Okay? So drained from calendar and eating your properties. That's it. That's it. That's it. Right, Jordan? And you look at it and you go, be robotic. And if I'm robotic, there's actually no emotional decision to be made. It's just like, okay, yes or no. It's either yes, 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 or yes, yes, no, 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 I can't take it. Done. Keep it simple. It's so much less stressful as well. And Unmall admitted as much today. He said, I was just stupid. My ego got the best of me. And he's been doing this a long time. And it still catches us every once in a while. And that's where the mindfulness comes in. The ability to recognize your emotions and your thoughts in real time. Wait a second. Here's the key. Before acting on them. Recognizing emotions, thoughts, and feelings before you act. That's like right when you're about to yell at your spouse or flip somebody off. You go, oh, check yourself. What are you about to do? Is it worth it? Give it some thought. Step outside of your body and go, no. My five second comment's gonna cost me a week of pain. Let's not do that. Suck up your pride, walk away. Same in trading. But most of the time, people allow their emotions to dictate their decisions. Cannot do it. And emotions always come before the decision. So you have to find a way to deal with those emotions. Okay? So, I hope that you guys learned a little bit about, oh shoot, my bad, I missed one chart in here. Oh, I can't even do it, I, let's go back. Sweet, let's go back. I missed one of the most important slides on here. How did I do that? I skipped a slide by total accident, total accident. Let's go back, forget everything I just said. I'm kidding. This one's called listen to the chart. All right, thankfully I caught this. And this is a great chart you wanna to listen to because this is a chart while it is somewhat in a vacuum. It's not the point. The point is reading the chart. Not your emotions, not your emotions, the chart. Gaps up, goes higher, very bullish. Bottoming tail, pulls back, goes below this area right here, okay? Then you get a big bottoming tail. So take a look here. Break support with significant new lows equals weakness. Why don't you break that support with a significant new low equals weakness? Okay, but that doesn't mean just because it's weak here, you can't scalp the bounce. Same with the cues from an hour ago, right? I looked at the cues and I was not expecting them to put in a new high today, but I said, man, they just went down 13 one minute bars in a row. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. You guys are visual. This is earlier today, today, 13 one minute bars in a row at minor price support or at some form of support near this support from earlier today. So a little bit of it, not quite a double bottom because I put it in a lower low, but it's in the area, the range of support. Look for a scalp bounce in the queues. I'm not expecting the queues to break 377. All oh, they, they might, but that's not the expectation. Let me repeat that. The Qs might break 377, but the expectation is just to get a 50% bounce, maybe 376 and walk away. Let's go back to this chart. Now, 
that we have put in a lower low. One, two, three, four, five, six bars down. I'm going to get a bounce. Note the initial acceleration of the bars. Wide bar, wide bar. The initial acceleration. Then the acceleration begins to slow down. Narrower bar, narrower bar, narrow bar. And then, obviously it would help if we had volume here, but we don't. Then you get a big bottom. You're going to get a bounce. And depending on the level and retracement of this bounce will determine on how I feel about the future of the stop. So it bounces back up maybe 40%. That's weak. It's good for a scalp, but it's a weak bounce. It's good for a scalp higher, but it's a weak bounce. It didn't do an 80 or 90% retracement. And then it pulls back. Note, note the congestion right here, right here. Note the congestion, doji bar, red bar, green bar, red, why? Because that's where buyer stepped up before. So you're gonna get a reaction, right? You're gonna get a reaction again, goes lower, Okay, bounces, the ceiling, sorry, the floor becomes the ceiling. The floor becomes the ceiling. Stock pulls back. Note, this whole time, it's just been holding this trend line. It's just been holding this orange trend line. It's gonna be hard to go long on this. This would be the only area that you might consider, but otherwise, it's a tough stock to go long on. Then, it puts in a sell setup, gets really choppy, right and goes down to the prior pivot low a little lower so actually it was a successful sell setup then this is where things start to change it finally for the first time breaks above breaks above the trend line if we had a moving average it probably breaking above the trend line but that's just a warning sign it's just a warning sign this is not an actionable event all right so note it's in the area we call it a retest all right, again, it's slightly lower, but retest, bounces back up, breaks above the trend line after the retest, breaks above the moving average, but we're still not ready. It's got to put in a higher high. It has to. Well, what does it do? It kind of puts in a higher high, but not much, just like a you know peekaboo high. 100% retracement retest, bullish or bearish? Well, what do you guys think? Is this bullish or bearish? Is this retest bullish or bearish? I don't mean for the immediate, I mean the overall picture. Is this overall bullish for this stock or bearish for this stock? Overall big picture. I don't mean for the next 10 minutes, I mean overall. It's tough, isn't it? This is neutral bullish. It's neutral bullish. Okay, why? Well, let's talk about it. The stock has moved from a pretty potent area all the way down here. So there's a good chance, there's a good chance that the stock is a little bit tired, possibly extended, right? There's a good chance it's a little bit tired and extended, going down that is, right? Because it's gone down quite a bit. May have met its ATR. Then it puts in a double bottom. That's bullish. It broke the trend line. That's bullish. It broke the moving average. That's bullish. It did 100% retracement. That's bullish. Didn't do a 50%, it did 100%. So now the expectation is the next pullback will not put in a new low. But here's the problem. The reason I use the term neutral bullish bullish neutral is because of this i can't do anything about it so while overall the general sentiment there is a is a little bit bullish right stocks moved a lot it broke the trend line broke the moving average put in a double bottom did a hundred percent retracement that's all those are bullish things but the stock's still weak i can't short it here this is pretty aggressive area to buy it. I mean, you could argue to buy it here because if you bought it right there on this green bar, it's probably not gonna go much lower. So this might be an area, it's a pretty smooth sequential pullback. So I would say, yeah, you could probably nibble a little long here. Would I go full here? Probably not, probably not. And obviously it's also dependent upon market environment too. Is the market bullish today, bearish today? Does the market look lower? right? Is the market going into an abyss? So there's obviously other things we need to look into. 
Okay. But right here, it's like bullish neutral. It's not an actionable event, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Pulls back, bounces, pulls back, and then breaks out. Now, here's the problem. This breakout here is a little bit unexpected. I'm not really expecting this kind of a breakout right here. This is a tough one. So, this is a scenario where you, one of two things could happen. You could say, you know what? It just hasn't given me what I want. I'm not going to go long on it. I'm just not going to go long. Somebody else in their plan might say, well, it has tested three times, four times. It could go lower, but the odds of going significantly lower are small. I'm going to nibble a small position and put my stop way down here. Person A, though, might say, well, I need a higher high first. I'll buy the pullback right over here. See it right over here? Right there. You might say, you know what? Yeah, it's not good enough. I'm going to wait for a higher high, and I'm going to buy the first pullback to support. So hopefully these green bars will continue, hopefully. And then I will buy this down to this red line, right? And then I'll, bu I'll buy the pullback if it pulls back to the red line, okay? Guys, I don't know what you guys do at home, okay? But one of the reasons I've honed my skills in trading is because I do this. You can't see me, but I'm pointing right at the chart. I do this all the time. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine arrows on it. One, two, three, four lines on it. Bunch of icons. And do you guys do this? I have a PowerPoint that's, I probably have three of them now. They're over 500 pages each. Do you go back and actually do this with your charts? Trades you took, trades you wanted to take, I hope so, because this is how you learn. Because by putting the green line here, you have to see the double bottom. By labeling it a retest and failure, you're visually representing the retest and failure in your mind. You're telling your mind that's a retest and failure, and it's going to burn itself in your brain, and that's what you want. Spend the time and do this, guys. I mean, I do it every week for you guys, right? Every week. How many slides are in here? I, I had to make every one of these slides, had to make every one of these slides, 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 including this one while we're in the middle of trading today, right? It's just being the best at your craft. Are you doing anything and everything possible to be as good as you can be? Okay, awesome, Brian. Go to Cliff's group, review your trades. It's not because I'm a badass. It's just because you want to be good at something. That's it. And there's no barriers to that. The only barrier to that is your effort. I'm going to repeat what I said. The only barrier to your success is your effort. And guess who controls that? You do. You're the only person who controls that effort. No one else controls your effort. You do. So that also means you control your results. Put that time and effort in. All right? Are you as good as you can be? None of us are. We can always be a little bit better, all right? So, sorry for missing that slide. I think it was worth us going back to it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this lecture. I hope that you'll understand the seven stock market events, even though we didn't specifically go into each one of those in detail, because that's in professional trading strategies. So take professional trading strategies and you'll have that. Um, also, remember, multiple concepts converging in an area require excellence, right? What's that line from the movie? You can't be perfect, but you can give a perfect effort. No one is perfect, but you can give a perfect effort. So require every trade you take to meet the criteria on your checklist. You'll take a few or fewer trades, but you'll have better results doing so. So hope you guys will take this information to become better traders. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.